The shift to remote and hybrid work over the past two years has accelerated application development on cloud infrastructure. However, securing these new assets has lagged behind. Qualys CloudView, the next generation of cloud security posture management, delivers an end-to-end -end multi cloud security and compliance solution encompassing the entire application lifecycle from build to runtime. CloudView enables enterprises to assess their cloud security and compliance posture, identify risks and gaps, auto remediate issues, proactively enforce best practices, and prove compliance in audits rapidly and efficiently. Identify your most vulnerable cloud assets by visiting securityweekly.com forward slash Qualys. The shift to remote Welcome back to Enterprise Security Weekly. Don't miss any of your favorite Security Weekly content. Visit securityweekly.com forward slash subscribe to subscribe to any of our podcast feeds and have all new episodes downloaded right to your phone. You can also join our mailing list, Discord server, and follow us on social media and our streaming platforms, which include YouTube and Twitch. And we're playing around with some, some others. <laughs> I, I don't know how that's going. We were uh, testing out Twitter and LinkedIn and... I don't know, Instagram, like you, you can stream in a bunch of different places now. All right. So for our second interview today, Jerry Bell joins us to talk about InfoSec community culture and the migration to Mastodon, which has been uh, uh, big, somewhat contentious news over the last couple of months. Uh, Jerry has worked in IT for 30 years, doing everything from writing code to racking servers and is currently the VP and CISO of IBM Public Cloud. Jerry has hosted the Defense of Security podcast, which I, I listened to a lot back in the past. That was one of uh, my regular podcasts on my on my podcast list every week. And uh, and he best known currently in the last couple of months for running the Infosec.exchange Mastodon instance for the past six years, which recently saw a slight bump in popularity. Welcome to the show, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for for being here. You know, this is something. Uh, you know, I think when we talked to prep for this, you know, I mentioned back in 2015. You know, I was uh, I'd been on Twitter for a little while. Twitter is kind of how I got into infosec. I remember uh, if you know Dave Shackelford, he was my my boss back when I was a pen tester, and uh, he encouraged me to get out, uh, go to conferences, give talks. And get involved with the community. And and one of the things he suggested, in, in addition to uh, putting together a blog and writing blogs, was getting on Twitter. And uh, and that's how I met a bunch of people in the industry. Uh, in fact, yeah, I've I've had decade plus long relationships with with folks on on Twitter. Uh, you know, and and sadly, you know, some of them have have passed away, and I never got to meet them in person. You know, so it's it's kind of. Um, you know, it's it, it's an interesting uh, medium, you know, to to talk to people uh, over and things like that. And I, I found it kind of fascinating how easy it was to to make that migration and how how quickly folks jumped over. So, you know, just kind of want to get your so you've been running this a lot longer than this big you know, when this big wave happened. Uh, it, was that correct? Six years you've been running this Mastodon instance? It'll be six years in um, in April. That's right. So, uh, you know, I gosh, probably six and a half, seven years ago, I, Mastodon and the Fediverse came onto my radar. And I'm someone who likes to tinker with things. And so I set up an instance, registered a domain. And, you know, for, uh, for five and a half years, it was... Pretty much just a little uh, a little side experiment that had a couple hundred people in total, you know, m maybe a handful of people on any given day until um, until October. Yeah, <laughs> and I I think you picked a great name. You know, it's it's uh, you know with real estate, it's location, 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 and uh, I think infosec that exchange is is a really easy one to remember. Uh, so I think I think you nailed it there. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, what was it? Um, what was it like those those first couple of weeks? Like, like, did you have to upgrade the hardware almost immediately, or oh. how did how did all that go? 
it was it was pretty exciting. Um, so back in in the spring of 2020, 2022, gosh, an entire year ago, uh, when when there was some first first some rumblings about um, Twitter potentially being taken over, there, there was a bit of a pop in in uh, in uh, accounts on Infosec that exchange, and up until that point. I had been running this the, the instance on a VPS, and uh, it had worked pretty well. I spent a couple hundred bucks a year for the for the five years uh, up until that point, and so that that was a bit of a, a wake up call. And I actually um, rented a pretty substantial server that I never thought I would actually <laughs> grow out of. Uh, it was a sixteen core server with um, NVMe drives, and it was a it was pretty pretty uh, beefy server for for what you know effectively had 10 or 20 people on it per day uh, round about october 27th 26th 27th 28th going into that weekend i was actually working uh down at at, at the beach and um, my phone started going nuts i have my alerts set on on twitter and uh, didn't think a whole lot of it. I knew that there was stuff going on until I looked at it. And I saw uh, lots and lots of people talking about uh, joining uh, infosec.exchange, talking about it and whatnot. And so I, I jumped over there. And sure enough, you know, several hundred people had come in. And I thought, hey, that's that's pretty cool. And over the, the next three or four days, there were um, probably five, six, seven hundred people per day uh, coming over and then then it really which which was pretty interesting and then it started to really accelerate to you know 1000 2000 3000 people per day and per day um, wow. <laughs> per day and at that point i started to panic a little bit because um not not only did moderation become um a much bigger challenge but also it was pretty apparent that my once uh, forever server was not going to cut it anymore. And so uh, I, I ended up standing up a moderation team who to this day is just an absolute godsend, phenomenal group of people uh, with the, the patience of saints. And uh, and then I, I spent a bunch of time uh, scaling out the instance, uh, both uh, from the from the perspective of um, you know, capacity, but also trying to get the costs under control because I had been uh, paying for it out of my own pocket until I got the bright idea to to really uh, go ask for for some financial help, and uh, so that the community did come together and, and help me out with that. Yeah, you know, it, it's um, yeah, and I think that's interesting that not only did you have to technically scale um, the the instance you were running, you know, but also staff it as well <laughs> you know and it's uh so so what's that what's that like 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 the the um you know do, doing that uh, moderation work um is that like when people flag things on the server like they have special roles where they get like a queue of stuff that needs to be looked at and handled how, how, what, what what is that role like so um, it's not unlike on twitter if you're familiar with twitter and somebody says something offensive or or um, you know, post some post a thread or or what have you. We have the same kind of reporting uh, facility in Mastodon or or the Fediverse. Uh, so so you can you can report somebody who's a spammer or or posting something obscene or illegal or or what have you. Mm -hmm. And so it's um, it's a it's a myriad of different things. Um, you know, it ranges from you know, misinformation about vaccines all the way to uh, death threats and, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, spam and, and uh, you know, herbal remedies and everything in between. You know, it's actually one of the things that, so, so I still pop over to Twitter um, because there, there's some people that uh, I communicate with that, that haven't made the switch, you know, so it's, but it, you know, I find that interesting because that's one of the things that definitely drove me to to use infosec.exchange a lot more is, uh, you know, around the same time that this move started happening, 
I, I just started, you know, that, that first huge round of round of layoffs uh, that they did at, at Twitter, I just started getting crypto spam, like mentions spam, like my mentions would just fill up with, you know, buy this, buy that, you know, new coin or, or join a game or a crypto game or, or whatever, you know, a dozen or more a day, every day, and it's still continuing. And like, you know, for a couple of weeks, I was reporting every single one and I just gave up, you know, like, like I just, uh, I, I don't need a side job, you know, just reporting mentions and stuff like that. So I don't know if that's just a scale thing for them, but you know, I never had that problem before, but, uh, yeah, I, I wonder how many people moved over to Mastodon, you know, because, you know, politically, you know, the things that were happening around Twitter or, you know, they, they had already you know, not been enjoying Twitter for a while and didn't need much of a push uh, to go to something else. Because I, I agree with a lot of people that it, it definitely feels like earlier days uh, of Twitter. But I wonder if that's just because the community is smaller and the chances of your, you know, whatever you post just getting lost in the noise is is much less, you know, on a platform with, you know, 30, 40,000 people versus millions. I, I think it's all of those things. Um you know, there there is the the network effect is a real thing, right? And so, um, there there were certainly a nucleus of people that moved over in the early days, and some of the reasons they moved over ranged from, you know, they they just really are offended by uh, Elon Musk's politics to they're af they're uh, afraid of, um, you know, what uh, they just don't want to see the spam. <laughs> Like, like what you you pointed out, or or many other uh, reasons. But you know, once that migration started, and and I, your your opening comments, by the way, I think hit it right on. It's it's actually about the community. It's not no, it's not so much about the platform. Um, I found personally, you know, Twitter was just a phenomenal um, tool. Right, I I met so many great people over the years that I never would have had an opportunity to connect with, to share ideas with, to learn from. And, and so the, the thing that I've learned in, in the, you know, the, the past couple of months in particular is it's, it's less about the actual platform and more about the community and the yeah. community has in large part, you know, picked up and moved over. But again, you know, the, the, the reality is Twitter is a huge, you know, very, very large uh, environment. And in, in InfoSec that exchange, we, I think we just passed 45,000 accounts, which is, you know, fairly big number, but I think Twitter is 500 million. So like, or mm -hmm. many orders magnitude larger. Yeah. I remember I did some research back in 2015 because I wanted to understand you know, what, what the size of, uh, InfoSec or, or what, what, yeah. InfoSec Twitter back in 2015 versus all of InfoSec, you know, cause we, we knew it was a bubble, you know, we knew it wasn't everybody. And back then, you know, the, the, through my research, the number I came up with was 8%, that 8% of people in InfoSec were on Twitter, which actually seems pr pretty remarkable. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. obviously InfoSec has grown a lot uh, you know, since, since 2015. So I, I don't know if, uh, you know, the, the numbers of people using it, uh, pseudo professionally, uh, to talk about security stuff, cybersecurity stuff, hacking, things like that, you know, is, is still up there. But, um, and, and obviously that like, there's a lot of shades of infosec, right? Like there, there's a lot of people that consider themselves hackers and, and do security research and stuff like that you know, but, but aren't security professionals. Right. So it's, it's kind of hard to, to do that kind of research, but, um, but yeah, it seemed like, um, you know, you know, what, what's, uh, I, I always said when all these new social networks came, came up, like it doesn't, the features don't matter as much as, you know, where the people are, you know, as soon mm -hmm. as the people move, as soon as you have that, uh, that tipping point, you know, that, that momentum where the, the people you enjoy bouncing questions off of and, and discussing things with, uh, ha have moved over, you know, if that, if that's where they're spending their time, if that's where they're posting and you enjoy reading their stuff and conversing with them, like, that's it. Like, it doesn't matter if Mastodon's better than Twitter, or, you know, Twitter gets better. Like it's where the people are. 
Absolutely. There, there are some, I, I will tell you, there are some features that I commonly hear, um, you know, as, as being problematic, like the fact that we don't have the equivalent of a quote tweet. And quote tweets, yeah. I think that is something that will likely get fixed. Um, search is something that is, uh, you know, fairly um, inhibited. And, and by the way, you know, one, one of the, uh, I've, I've, written about this or posted about this quite a bit over the, the course of the past couple of months, you know, Mastodon isn't Twitter. <laughs> it's, it's, it, 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 it in some ways feels a lot like Twitter it has similar purposes, but as mm-hmm. a different lineage, the, the, the driving factors behind it, you know, getting to where it is today are different. It's a different community that built it up. The, the values that the people had who have created it, are, are different than what you saw with, um, you know, with Twitter. It's Twitter was a, a commercial enterprise that 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 valued engagement and and uh, you know growth and time on the site and and whatnot, and that that drove certain, you know, features and capabilities. And for me personally, I think it was kind of bad for my blood pressure because it seemed like Twitter was always putting stuff in front of me that I it knew I would disagree with and and would yeah. you know. It, it became the media, the mainstream media, basically, right? If it bleeds, it leads. <laughs> and on you know, on the other side, uh, with with Mastodon and and the Fediverse in general, is it was is more intended to be a, a community, and it it doesn't have the concept of uh, investors and advertisers and whatnot. It, it's it's about the people, and so some of the features we had come to to rely on on twitter you know we're we're are were and to some extent still are viewed as you know potentially enabling bad behavior like um you know abusive behavior targeting and and mm-hmm. things like that and and to some extent i think that is um you know a, a valid concern to another to another extent i you know i think um i think it is inhibiting valuable use of of the tool and but that comes down to moderation right like the fact that um that you have quote tweets doesn't you know that you, that just means that that as a moderator like we have we have more responsibility to make sure that people are are not acting irresponsibly i guess is how i'm viewing that yeah i i, I remember reading that quote tweets weren't there by design, you know, because they, they were, and, and I think that's when I realized I used Twitter very differently from sa- how some other people were using it. And, and it, I had to do some reading and some looking around to see like, like, like what is bad use of quote tweets look like? Because today uh, I did a quote tweet on Twitter because we sent out, uh, we were promoting today's show. We were promoting, um, you know, some of the interviews and, and the stuff on today's show from the Security Weekly account. And, you know, a common way that I'll use a quote tweet is I'll, I'll hit quote tweet on that and I'll, you know, say why I'm looking forward to this interview and and I'll send that on to to my followers. So I'm, I'm just, you know, taking this promotion and, and adding some commentary on it. Um, you know, so so it took me a bit to understand, like, like what what is what is misuse of quote tweets look like? And, and the other thing that kind of horrified me was, was the idea of, you, you know, like somebody was really excited. They found a tool that would delete their their, their tweets, uh, any tweets that are older than a week, you know, which the way I use Twitter, like that was horrifying to me. Like I, I treasure these conversations that I had, you know, eight, nine, 10 years ago, you know, and sometimes I go back and I use those in talks and, you know, because people... There's some great quotes on Twitter. You know, it, there's there's some great conversations that happened, and I, I find it really useful to go back and, and and look at what we were talking about back then. Uh, you know, and and how that informed what we're doing today. You know, as as commentary on on uh, you know, yeah, it looks like looks like some of these predictions were right. You know, so it's it's I, I look at it and use it. I think a lot different than than maybe some other people do. Is is a conclusion I came to. Yeah, um, I, for me, for me personally, I've been a little disappointed. I, not surprised, I guess, but disappointed and frustrated because I, I, I had the same thing. Like I've had so many 
productive and enlightening discussions on Twitter. Uh, what the most recent example was related to GDPR when, when the GDPR was was coming online. I had a bunch of discussions online with with attorneys and and uh, you know actually regulators and and other mm-hmm. other people on Twitter, and those are all gone. <laughs> so like I yeah. can see things that I posted, but the but the other side of those are are gone to and, yeah. and it's, it's um, that's unfortunate uh, but at the same time on mass you know you, you, in twitter you actually had to go and find a third party thing to do that on mastodon that, that's actually like a native capability that that a platform offers what what, what is that that's a native ability I think ability to that. to purge uh, posts after a certain period of time ah uh, yeah yeah disappearing messages basically right yeah, same concept as that. Exactly. Yeah, and uh, so another thing that's interesting, I, I think, is Twitter had absolutely turned into you know a platform that uh, you know marketing folks use, that companies use. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, marketing automation platforms. You know, where you can schedule tweets and you can have a whole marketing digital marketing team managing uh, messaging that they're sending out, you know, a tool that'll, you know, you put together your message and it's going to send it to LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, a bunch all at once. And I've noticed a lot of those tools don't support Mastodon, but I, I have started seeing some of those companies coming over to to Mastodon. So we're seeing some of those those use cases, you know, some of those non-human accounts, accounts that represent either organizations, whether they're nonprofits or, or their projects or their, um, you know, bots, you know, the ones that spit out funny stuff. Uh, you know, I think there's a whole Mastodon server I saw that's that's nothing but bots. Um, space, bot- you know, what is it? It's called bots in space. Bots in space. <laughs> that's great. So it's it's. Um, I don't know what what is the I guess where I'm driving is what what does the future look like you know does um you know the Fediverse uh, and one of the nice features I think is you don't have to look at the Fediverse you know you you can look at only your your local stuff which I, I think will somewhat insulate from some of the negative some of the downsides of of just scale and growth you know and the mm-hmm. noise that can that can result from that but. Um, you know, where, where, where do you stand on like companies creating accounts, you know, accounts, you know, being uh, automated or n- non-human accounts in general, you know, and, and uh, whether those should be allowed or should there be limits on them? Yeah, I, I haven't looked at the rules in a while. I don't know if you have rules specific uh, for your instance, just for non-human accounts or shared accounts. This You're starting to get into the um, like the philosophy of of uh, the Fediverse and some of the nuances that, that and challenges I think that lie ahead for us are when, when different instances have materially different values. And so if instance A <clears throat> allows um, corporate type accounts and instant B uh, you know, finds those to be terribly offensive, then they're, they're probably going to end up blocking each other. Uh, and, and so it goes for, for me personally, uh, we, we do have a no spam Rule. We do have quite a few uh, corporate and and you know non-person type accounts, and fortunately, a lot of them have actually approached me beforehand and asked you know for for uh, my you know my permission, I guess. And the thing that I always tell them is like, you know, this isn't a, it's not a marketing platform, right? You, you, you're welcome to be here. You have to follow the rules, and the expectation is that you know you're contributing to the discussion, right? So if you want to mm-hmm. post about, you know, some cool research that you've done or, a, a, you know, a, a learning blog that you, you've posted or a video, you know, fine. Uh, but it, you know, just um, like gratuitous spam is, is not, not welcome. So follow-up question on that. Um, thanks for being on here is one of the more amusing parts of Twitter for me are definitely the brand accounts, especially the the humorous ones like Wendy's. Uh, I, I understand your approach and take on that as contributing to the conversation, but how do you personally feel about these sort of brand accounts potentially being on Mastodon? And, and how do you think Mastodon and different instances might stand on these brand accounts? 
That's a good, it's a really good question. I, I don't, I don't know how the Fediverse would react to Wendy's to be <laughs> <laughs> the spicy takes. <laughs> I, I um, part of me thinks that it actually might go uh, relatively well. Um, I, I, you know, I, again, because, because it's novel, right. You know, we, we see, uh, f- we see, s- there are some novel uh, commercial accounts like the, 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 um, uh, I'm drawing a blank on the weather app. Well, there's a weather app that has, uh, you know, post offensive messages oh, yeah. to you and weather, right? Well, they have an account. And, and so, so, you know, I, I think it, it, it depends, right? I don't know that it's a, it's a black and white uh, thing <laughs> to be, to be candid. Um, I, I, I think as long as from, from my standpoint, as long as it's not obnoxious uh, and in you know gratuitous and 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 you know like if people don't want to see that it's pretty easy to block, right? You can block an account really easily. You can actually block an entire incident or sorry instance, um, also quite easily too. So um, you know I, again if if uh, you know I, I, I if Wendy's joined infosec infosec that exchange I am not sure what I would do. <laughs> I'd maybe encourage them to go to a different instance. I, I I don't know. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> well, I recently joined InfoSec Exchange thanks to a relatively famous non-horse and I'm gradually dipping my toes into Mastodon. Uh, what do you suggest for those who are just starting with a new Mastodon account, especially those that are switching over from Twitter? Um, number one is I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend going to one of the really big instances uh, like like mastodon.social there's i think there's a lot of um fear of missing out by not being on a super super large instance they have about a million accounts um in the, the challenge with them is they have a lot of i mean look anytime you have a million people you get a lot of noise and so they have all sorts of of both performance problems and moderation challenges. And not that, by the way, that they, they do any, any sort of a bad job. They're actually a phenomenal uh, group of people. I just, sometimes I don't, I don't, I'm not sure that's the best first place for, uh, for people to be. I, I would say, you know, find, find an instance that aligns with your, uh, your in- interests, right? There's, Interests like just like infosec that exchange is somewhat infosec focused. Although, like we don't have a rule that says you only can talk about infosec stuff. Like I post plenty of cat and dog pictures and talk about politics and and you know personal stuff. Probably ten times more than I do about security stuff. Um, but you know there are other instances that deal with niches like crafts. There's photography ones. There's knitting ones. There's you know, medical instances, there's legal instances, there's news instances. So finding, finding one that, um, you know, that, that is, you know, a, a bit active, because if you, if you join one that is, you know, pretty sparsely populated, you're probably not going to have, uh, you're not going to get a lot of interaction and you'll get the, I think you'll get the wrong impression if you find one that aligns with your interests, I think you'll have the best time because your local timeline will be filled with people who are who you probably find interesting talking about things that you do find interesting. That makes a lot gotta of sense. Find, Thank you. Got to find your people. Got to find your people. Now, but having said that, right? Like, regardless of where you end up, unless the two unless two instances have ended up blocking each other. You you can it's kind of like email right you can talk to anybody in the Fediverse you can follow them you can communicate back and forth it's just you know if you if you pick an instance that interests you you're going to see like all of the content that is posted to that instance whereas you might not see it unless you're actually actively following people. That's interesting. So I I have a question that that I've been curious about. Uh, when you created an instance and, and kind of connected it to the Fediverse, are you granted special powers within Mastodon? Are you able to see how many instances there are, or see the whole Fediverse and kind of like the Watcher in the Marvel Universe? 
<laughs> um, That's a great question. So, I, I mean, so I think the answer is is yeah. I don't I don't mean to to evade the question at all. The answer is is certainly yes. Like I, all that stuff exists in the database that I have access to. But on the other end, if you go to Fediverse.observer, you, you can see it too. It's um, it's <laughs> it's a pretty open protocol, and uh, there's there's lots of um, you know lots of sites online that actually do track that stuff. Yeah. So. Um... Yeah, I don't. I don't know if Katie, if if you or Tyler uh, have any questions, but um, but yeah, for me, I, I'm still I'm still dancing between the two. Um, I, I go check uh, Twitter every now and then, but it, it's mostly just checking it, you know, because you know some people I've been communicating with over DMs there for years. Yeah, you know, I've got my Mastodon uh, account, in, you know, in in my name. And I guess I. I I guess that's okay. I guess that's still legal over there on on Twitter, so people uh, can clearly uh, figure out how to find me over over in Mastodon. Uh, but certainly, the conversations I'm having are are almost 100% on on Mastodon these days. So it's um, it, for me. You know, I mentioned I use it a little bit differently. I, I was an industry analyst, so I spent all day, every day, just thinking about InfoSec's like bigger problems, how to solve them, that that kind of stuff. And it, it was just an invaluable tool for me to be able to go to this network that I had on Twitter and, and pose a question, you know, or or get somebody's take on something or or do like a, a quick survey or something like that. You know, oftentimes in, in just like an hour or a couple of hours or something like that, I could have these great insights on on something I was brainstorming about. And, um, and yeah, it, it seems to be fully over, uh, in, in, into Mastodon now. So it's, it's, uh, you know, I found it interesting how not, how non-sticky, you know, people in, in like product management talk a lot about the uh, stickiness uh, of a product and how you make a product sticky. And it's, um, yeah, I mean, all those features are, you know, just weren't all that important. It seems, you know, it's, it's where the conversation's at. So I'm, I'm I'm starting to repeat myself here. Well, we'll see where we'll see what the long term holds. Um, you know, I, I obviously we don't know where Twitter will go. I mean, they could turn the corner and release some new super Uber feature, and everybody you know runs runs back to them, or you know they they could uh, turn their corporate headquarters into a spirit Halloween like. We we don't know where <laughs> where their trajectory is, but we do know that in the past, you know, my the likes of MySpace and Dig and and Slashdot, like those things fell apart fast, and mm -hmm. and so I, you know, part of me wonders if that's what's going on. Um, for for my for my part, I um, I thought that the the community that had formed in and Twitter was like something that was super valuable. And yeah. I feared losing that and not from a personal standpoint, but from like a, the good of the world standpoint. And, uh, you know, I had this, this place and I wanted to, to at least offer, offer it up as a soft landing spot, you know, from, from my, my perspective, there's a bunch of really great uh, security instances on the Fediverse. I'm, you know, I have one um, of probably two or three dozen different security-focused instances that that are out there. Um, and you know, but from from my point, from my perspective, I'm, I'm I view myself as kind of the front door. So a lot of people have been kind of piling into the instance from Twitter, and then they um, they move on. Some of them create their own personal instance, mm -hmm. some move on to others, some stay. And, and that's, uh, that's all great. And th that is one aspect of it. I really like is that we can all still talk together, but you know, Mastodon like proper, you know, like Germany Mastodon can't enforce new features on you. Like you're, you're not even running vanilla Mastodon on this instance. So ultimately you have a lot of control over what, what, new features to adopt or, or not adopt, right? That's right. 
That's right. So we 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 run a, a fork, and probably soon gonna run a fork of that fork, <laughs> with, <laughs> with some extra patches on top of the fork of the fork, uh, because you know that's just the nature of the beast, right? The you know the 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 core Mastodon software is great, but it has certain limitations, like it doesn't allow longer posts and one of the one of the things that people are are both uh, enthralled and alarmed by when you when you first join InfoSec. I was shocked. I was shocked. I was, shocked. I was like <laughs> I was like there's being generous and then there's just ridiculous. Come on Jerry, what are you doing? <laughs> and that that was the product of a um of a of a battle with with an, another instance owner. We we uh we kept right ra- like raising what, one the, upping the- each other. <laughs> And then eventually we lost interest in it, and <laughs> here we are. Uh, but you know, there's other there's other things like the ability to, to include rich text, rich text or Markdown. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's there's uh, you know various other features that the fork gives. I'm you no know, more. I'm trying to improve the ability to search posts on on the instance and there's there's a there's now a fork of the fork that provides the quote t- quote tweet functionality and some uh, in the process of that so um but yeah the, like is that, you don't is that going to be contentious and divisive you think the adding in prob- quote tweets probably but i um being contentious and divisive is not new to me now i um <laughs> i don't relish controversy or or conflict but holy moly has it found me since I've been there. Yeah, I, th- I think, uh, well, people used to say that on Twitter, too. Like, once you pass a certain number of followers, uh, like, like, things change all of a sudden. You start getting pushed back on stuff. You start getting challenged a lot more. And uh, and li- like you mentioned, there, there's a couple dozen InfoSec servers out there. People have gone and, and started their own. So it's, it's uh, I- I'm glad you have that attitude towards it, you know, because I'd much rather you be... Um, you know, divisive about, you know, what you're going to do with it, then constantly on the fence and, you know, swaying back and forth and stuff like that. Um, and, and so far I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. So I can't, I can't complain. Good. Good. That so makes me happy. I'm really curious about the, the software forking and different instances running kind of their own almost unique versions of Macedon. So if you implemented it, quote tweeting, how would that be seen by the Fediverse or would that be interpreted? So the it's a good it's a great question. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples. So like with um, with the rich text formatting that that the glitch fork uh, provides in uh, in in a non glitch instance, you'll just see the the formatting characters. Like so, for a bold, you'll see the two stars before and after, and and so it's you know it it isn't like totally scrambled in the case of the, uh, the the quote quote tweets it quite literally is just the the, the um you know you, you have your your message and then a link to the quoted tweet and so if you're on a non an instance that doesn't support the quote tweets it looks like just a message with a link to a post okay that makes sense thanks mm-hmm but right. I mean, you know, look, yeah. one of the challenges that that I I think we have to be cognizant of is that we we have to not do the mic, you know, the the historical, not the current Microsoft thing, but the historic Microsoft thing of, you know, embrace and extend in ways that nobody else supports. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder about the. Um, I guess Markdown doesn't look too terrible if you're on an instance that doesn't support Markdown. Um, but uh, honestly, that's been really my only frustration so far is finding a markdown guide. Like I, I, every now and then I search for it and it's like, uh, oh, we support markdown as supported by so-and-so. And And I go over and I look at that and I just can't find a guide anywhere because it seems to be different from the markdown that I use in Notion, which is different from the markdown that use in like GitHub and GitLab. Like uh, there's so many flavors of Markdown. I'm, that's my only frustration so far is finding a guide. It's very limited. I'll I'll ping you one afterwards. Okay. <laughs> All 
Awesome. Well, this has been great. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to be on here and answer all our our, our stupid questions <laughs> about the uh, the Fediverse, which is uh, so far vastly superior to the Metaverse, uh, I must say. But and, thank you, Jerry. Uh, yes, absolutely. Thank you for having me. And you spent much less than Facebook on it, too. Quite a bit less, yes. All right, we'll be right back in a few moments with the weekly enterprise news. 